Hey there, I'm David. This is a filler episode. Let's do this. I want to start with a little bit of cosplay that I've been working on. I'm a big fan of the game Overwatch, as you know from some of the earlier videos, and I figured I look a little bit like McCree from Overwatch. So I've been working on a cosplay outfit for one of the local Comic Cons to go as McCree. And the first thing that I put together was his Peacemaker, or Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper. Yeah, Peacekeeper. And um, this was printed on multiple printers. I printed on both the Ultimaker 2 Plus and the CR10 Mini. It took combined over 48 hours of printing. It's, I believe, 17 or 18 pieces. I'll post the link to the Thingiverse uh, model in the description. It is a really detailed model. It's actually the Gambler gun, but I decided to paint it in the stock McCree skin. The quality of the model is amazing. I nearly screwed it up several times. Um, so my process for working through this, I printed each piece and it formed two sides split down the middle here. I glued these sides together so independently, and then started to, to prime and spray everything. I, this, this and the, the trigger, I did uh, all separately, primed and painted. Also the bullet holster and the independent bullets, which you can see, all primed and painted independently. Then once the two sides had dried, I noticed that I had screwed up. I left it in the sun too long, and the parts had started to warp. So in order to fix that, I took a hairdryer to it and slowly bent them back into place. Some things didn't work out so great. You can see this line along the, the handle. That didn't quite align properly after gluing it back together. But overall, I managed to get out most of the problems. Most of the seams are kind of well enough hidden for, for a cosplay. Um, even the top seam, you can sort of see it, but it's reasonably hidden. I still needed to look like a cosplay item, so there's a little bit of red, red tape uh, stuck to here. I painted some masking tape. Super happy with how this came out. Um, usual hobby paints. I primed and sprayed it um, actually first in a layer of uh, side gloss anthracite uh, paint, so that's spray paint, and then uh, brushed on this more glossy silver color. Give it a sort of gunmetal. You can see the anthracite spray still on the darker sections. A little bit of silver detailing. Uh, the handle, again, brown, mixed with a little bit of, of yellow, and did a little bit of detailing in lighter and darker shades. Very happy with this. I also glued in some springs, so this has a bit of, bit of motion to it. Feels really good in the hand, and it's massive. It's, I love it. I'm super happy with this. A couple more pieces to this costume, which I've been printing. Um, I also started trying EVA foam to do cosplay. Actually, tough, but I'm kind of working it out. I had hoped for this week's Saturday to take it to Amsterdam Comic Con, but I will not make that. Oh well. The next piece that's a work in progress is this Cthulhu idol. <laughs> I think this is a super cool statue. I saw someone, this actually gave me the idea for my first bronze working stuff. I saw someone uh, print this in Bronzeville and age it with vinegar and salt. And I tried it originally on a coaster and a Chep calibration cube. Came out amazing with a nice green and glossy bronze finish. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this idol. You can see I've started sanding it. And just a little bit of touch-up to get the bronze fill filament out. This was printed in Colorfab bronze fill. Their quality of their filament is amazing. Absolutely love it. 
can't say I've seen something quite like this before and I'm gonna keep using it. It's quite expensive but definitely worth it. Um, take a bit of Brasso or some s sort of brass shiner and shine it up and then afterwards you can sprinkle on, I think you can even just use a spritzer uh, with some salt vinegar mixture, get a nice cover and leave it for a couple of days and you'll see a green, like, like it's been left in the ocean sort of thing form on it and you can brush that down and polish it up again and you get this beautiful finish. I haven't really taken the time but we'll get there eventually and this will end up probably on my little shelf behind me. Speaking of things from my shelf behind me, uh, you've probably seen in the last couple of videos these giant Lego minifigs. Um, these things are so cool. Uh, user, uh, I will post the link in, in the description, he decided to model a base one and a bunch of people have remixed them with all sorts of stuff from classic space Lego to pretty much everything. My original intention was to print one of myself, so I got some longish hair and, well, black shirt and blue jeans, it's sort of my usual look. Um, and I'll finish it off at some point. I kind of got distracted with cosplay things and all sorts of other stuff. And last but not least, my D&D dice box. Now, this is one of the things that I first wanted to print when I first got the Ultimaker. So I'm still borrowing my friend's Ultimaker, and initially I tried to print this I bought some Woodfill PLA uh, from, I think it was a G-Tech Woodfill, I'm not sure, I'll post a link again, um, and initially tried it and the Ultimaker's bed is not quite big enough to print this, it's just not wide enough. So I tried to print it at an angle, failed horribly, so I decided to leave it alone. Now with my CR10 Mini, I finally decided to give it a shot again. So what it is, is it's this, this tray. And then it's got this, which is a dice holder with space for your miniature and all of your dice. And what I did was I put some magnets in there. The model, thankfully, the, the user who, who uploaded this, great guy, I posted this on Reddit and he's actually come to the thread to say, give me some tips and say well done and, and you know, he's been really interactive, so it's, it's awesome to see. Um, so it's got some holes for some magnets. I think the intention is actually to pause before the last layer and put the magnets in, but I actually just sand it down, cut the holes and stuck them in. I also put some purple felt, which I really love the look of that, just that purple and dark wood, and sanded down the model itself after printing and applied some warm walnut uh, stain. It's from a brand called Rambo, and this warm walnut just gives this incredible dark finish all over. You can see there were even some mistakes on here. I decided to not reprint this because it gives it a bit of an authentic look to it. Very happy with that result. And I'm going to be using this for D&D from now on. You can see how nicely that all fits, how nice that finish is. I could probably do a bit more, maybe a bit of dry brushing to, to brush up the logo a little bit, but I'm actually very happy with the way this turned out, so I'm probably also just gonna leave it as it is. Yeah, as you can see, absolutely beautiful finish. Just everything about this feels premium. Love it.
that I got a spool of Polyalchemy Elixir Nightshade color. Everything about that filament screams quality. I've printed a couple small things, one or two vase mode prints. It's beautiful. So uh, one of the next what the prints is probably going to be in that filament just because I love how that filament looks. Um, I got two colors from Polyalchemy. One of them is going to be the Nightshade, which I mentioned, and the other I think is called like Gold Dust or uh, Gold Lust, something like that. It's a very like golden orangey color. Absolutely stunning. So, gonna see what I can print in those. Um, might pick up one of the What the Prints with that. Let's see. Hope you enjoyed this filler. Uh, remember, like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you want me to print. I need some more suggestions. Please feel free to pepper the comments full of whatever you think would be awesome. Thanks again, and see you next time.